Hello and welcome to our AutoPipe demonstration. Uh, in this demonstration, I'll just do a brief introduction to AutoPipe using a uh, PowerPoint here. Um, we'll look at the AutoPipe differentiators. It's basically just what makes AutoPipe unique and they're important things to understand if you're gonna be using AutoPipe. Then we'll jump into a live demonstration in the program and uh, usually I do some questions and answers at the end. Um, since this is recorded, just send me any questions and if we need to, we could jump on a call. So AutoPipe is a full-featured pipe stress analysis program. We have static loadings and dynamic loadings and some special analysis tools that allow us uh, to set up and run those loadings and analyses. Uh, we have many different piping codes and interoperabilities with different uh, other programs, and we have material and component libraries available. AutoPipe's been used for uh, 25 plus years in the power process and offshore industries. It's also been used for that long in the buried or cross-country industry, and it is recognized by ASCE for our buried piping module. And it's also used in the nuclear industry, um, and it does go through quality assurance. This is just a list of our major customers who are currently using AutoPipe. Now there's a document that shows um, our three licensing options for AutoPipe, which are three editions of AutoPipe, AutoPipe, AutoPipe Advanced, and AutoPipe Nuclear. Um, so if you don't have this document, make sure that you ask us for it in order to determine which edition of the program is right for you and which li license you should go with. Um, this is just a snapshot of that document. I don't expect you to read it here, but it does set me up for the next slide. Now, if you were to go with AutoPipe Advanced or Nuclear, you'll automatically get access to the top two products on the left and the right, um, which go with AutoPipe. So this is our AutoPipe product line. AutoPipe's in the middle here. It's our pipe stress analysis program. On the top left, uh, is APIM or Auto Pipe Isometric Manager, which allows you to create a fully customizable digital stress isometric from your piping model in AutoPipe automatically. So you can just send that right out. Um, on the top right is a product called AutoPipe Nozzle. It's a niche product that allows you to export your loads from AutoPipe and some geometry information from AutoPipe for multiple nozzle designs uh, in order to evaluate your nozzles and see if you'll be overloading them. Again, uh, if you, this can automatically be exported. So if you have a, a nozzle connection here, you can automatically export those loads and some information about that connection to AutoPipe Nozzle. Again, both of those are automatically included with AutoPipe Advanced and AutoPipe Nuclear. Down below is a product call, called AutoPipe Vessel. This is a standalone product. It's used for the optimization and analysis of vessels, so pressure vessels, heat exchangers, tanks, air coolers, chimneys. Um, it does interoperate with AutoPipe where we can again automatically send loads as, at a nozzle connection to that nozzle and AutoPipe Vessel. Um, but if you're interested in this product, you can uh, ask your account manager about it. You can always set up a demonstration for that also. The support optimizer in AutoPipe is um, our latest feature. It is also available with AutoPipe Advanced and AutoPipe Nuclear. Um, support optimization is a process that allows the user to set up a model to have the software locate the best place for the pipe supports faster than uh, any engineer can. So it's a feature in AutoPipe that uses an intelligent genetic search algorithm. It follows an evolutionary approach to compare thousands of design alternatives. It's a learning algorithm, kind of like an artificial intelligence, and it learns from the failures and it promotes the survival of the fittest. So for a given pipe stress analysis problem, the support optimization feature will automatically consider thousands of solution configurations, and it will weed out invalid trials that don't satisfy the specified design criteria, and it will then give you um, the solutions that do. This slide shows the products that AutoPipe integrates with. The Bentley products are up on the top and the third party products are down below. Basically, um, we do our best to be able to import at least the geometry from most CAD or plant types of products. So if you do are using this for design, um, we should be able to bring in the geometry and sometimes intelligent information also. The AutoPipe and STAD pipe link interoperability is the only 
true two-way integration between structural and pipe stress. Um, this is an interoperability that saves weeks of design time and it provides safer, more realistic engineered designs. Basically, uh, in auto pipe on the left, you would start in and in doing your pipe stress analysis. In STAD on the right, you would start doing your structural analysis. And this can be the same person or different people or groups. Um, once they're both satisfying their individual criteria, the piping model can be exported from AutoPipe to STAD, along with the support locations and the support loads. Those supports can then be connected from the piping to the structure in STAD, and the loads can be transferred to the structure. Then in STAD, the structural engineer would want to create combinations that include both the piping and the structural loads, and rerun the analysis, make any changes that are necessary to make sure that you're still satisfying that structural criteria. Once that's done, uh, the structural engineer can export the structural model over to AutoPipe along with the support connections that were made instead. And the piping model can be brought into AutoPipe along with those support connections. And the piping analysis should then be rerun in AutoPipe. And again, on the AutoPipe side, this is really just making sure that uh, we're still passing our criteria um, because now the flexibility of your piping system has changed. This can be a, an iterative uh, approach where you have to go around a few times, but it gets rid of any manual transfer of data. It really saves time and you're taking into account the accurate loads and the accurate flexibilities. Let's move on to the unique features of AutoPipe. So most programs that do pipe stress analysis work point by point or component by component, where you go to an individual point and you make any updates necessary at that point and you go to the next point and do the same thing and so forth. An auto pipe can definitely work like that, but it can also work a little bit more globally where you can make changes or insert information over multiple points or multiple components at one time. So as an example, if I wanna to get to the model on the right, I can start with the model on the left where I model the header and the, the header pipe and then this branch line. And I can then select the entire branch line and do a copy and a paste. I can just copy it, control C, and then paste, 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 control V until I get to the model on the right. So modeling this model on the right really wouldn't take much time. Uh, in this example, all of my branch lines are the same, so it's quite easy. Even if they were a bit different, you could actually still copy paste and then make some sm small changes as necessary. This is also really useful because you can cut and paste or copy and paste from model to model. So a great example of this is if you have maybe like an expansion joint configuration or a support, support type of configuration that you want to use uh, in different models, you can create a template of that configuration and just copy and paste it into the actual models that you want to use it for. So, any type of like data can be applied across ranges or component groups or multiple points at one time. And I'll try to show some examples of this in the live demonstration. Now, AutoPipe runs on something called segment technology. So you'll see that our point names by default are alphanumeric. You'll see A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and so forth. That alpha character represents what segment that point is currently on. Segments are really useful in two ways. The first is being shown here on the right, where we're able to hide sections of our piping from view by hiding segments. So on the top, I just, I'm not interested in my branch lines, I'm hiding them, and on the bottom, I'm not interested in my header pipe, I'm hiding it. And it didn't have to be branch or header, you can hide any portion of the piping by hiding segments. This is really useful in the way that we can focus on small detailed modeling areas pre-analysis, and we can focus on fixing critical areas post-analysis. The other way that segments are really useful is that, that you can apply certain loads on a segment basis. So the classic example is a wind load. If you have a pipe that's going uh, from inside of a building to outside of a building, you can split the segment at that building wall and you can apply wind to only the portion outside of the building. In AutoPipe, we have input grids that are used to organize and, and review all of the inputs into the model. This is a grill that 
this is a grid that looks and acts just like Excel. So it has different tabs for all of your different input information. Um, modifications can be made from right within the grid. It is synchronized with the plot, which you can see over here on the right. If you select in the grid, it also selects on the plot and vice versa. You can hide columns and sort columns, just like in Excel. Uh, you can undo and redo, and you can save these to Microsoft Access database files. For post-processing, we have some really helpful tools. We can have a fully interactive on-screen results view where you can look at single point results in a dialog box, and you can filter the results grid. Uh, we have VCR buttons to help with quick navigation from maximums to minimums. We have very clear stress and displacement plots. We have a clear stress plot that can be sorted for all of your stress combinations, basically look at, looking at an envelope of all of your combinations. You can set filters for supports, stresses, displacements, et cetera, in order to only look at uh, specific results. In Autopipe, we have a load combination dialog box that's very useful. This is a step that would happen after you run your analysis, but before you, you review your results. And it's just to set up what re results you are reviewing. We have automated uh, stress combinations that will automatically be created for you by the program based on the code and the code year that you select to the, for the model. But you can also have user-defined stress combinations if additional combinations are needed. You can easily create new combinations, duplicate combinations, modify, delete, or print combinations. Uh, there's some color coding for quick visual feedback on any invalid combinations. And we have filtering options to identify and solve complex problems very quickly. And lastly, we have a results grid that's very similar to our input grid. It is synchronized with the plot also, so it's a really nice way to review your results. Um, and you can sort columns by double clicking. There's some filtering options in there. Uh, you can also print this to Microsoft Access Database file. So it's a really useful tool that we will take a look at. All right, let's jump into the program. So here we're in Autopipe. I have started a model in Autopipe um, that we will continue to work with here. Uh, here's my input grid. Generally, I keep this input grid nice and big on my second screen, and I use it throughout my entire uh, working time in Autopipe. Um, sharing one screen for a demonstration makes it tough, so you'll see me close it and, and bring it back up. But my, my normal practice is honestly to keep it open. Um, we also have a command search utility up at the top. So you'll see, if I just close this out for right now, you'll see that we have in Autopipe a ribbon format, very similar to your Microsoft applications. Um, all of our commands are located from any of these ribbon tabs. On the ribbon tab, you'll see many different options for commands, and they all have like a one to three word description and an image. And if that's not enough for you, you still don't understand what it can be used for, if you hover over a button, a tooltip description will pop up to help you understand it a little bit further. The command search utility um, will pop up when you first open up Autopipe, and it's really useful to everyone, but especially to our new users. If you want to perform a command, but you really just have no idea where to find that command, um, this is a really useful tool. For instance, if I wanted to um, do something with an earthquake, uh, I can type in earthquake and all of my options that are available in Autopipe for earthquake pop up. So it shows me the path, the ribbon path, where I can find these options, or I could actually uh, just perform it right from here if it was a task that made sense at this point. So I started a, a model here, and I have, when I did start this model, the first things I have to do are fill out some information about my, my piping model and about my pipe. So the general model options dialog box was used to start the model. I, in here, pick my piping code and my piping code year, my units that I'm going to use, my vertical axis, my, my number of operating cases, and my component and material libraries. Then I set up some information about the pipe that I'm going to be working with. So right now, what I have defined is a 12-inch standard wall thickness pipe. This pipe properties dialog box was used to fill out all of the information about my pipe, the diameter, uh, schedule, corrosion allowance, if I have any insulation or cladding or lining, the specific gravity of contents, and my pipe material. 
We do have pipe libraries for the different codes. Uh, there are many materials available in here. If you did not find your material, you can use NS, which is non-standard, and fill out the properties and allowables of that material. And if it's a material that you're going to be using often, you can actually update the material library with that material information. Just as a side note, any, any view options that you see in here, like the text, the text size, um, the colors, all of that can be adjusted and set up according to the user's preference. So keep that in mind. Um, now, if I look at my input grid on the point tab, I have three, I started with an anchor and three sections of pipe. Uh, in the point tab and also on the plot, I can show the length. And I see that these are three five foot sections of pipe. Now, if I want to make a change, I can very easily change it to like 15 feet, let's say. If I wanted to change it for all three sections, just like in Excel, I can just grab the bottom right corner, pull it down, and I can now see that they're all 15 foot sections of pipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to model a small section, a small piping model um, in here with some supports, and then we'll run an analysis. So next, I'm going to insert a bend. Let's say it's 10 feet away. You can model um, basically any radius bend as long as it fits in the amount of space you give it. And you can model an elbow or mitered bends. The bend will be transparent. It'll have some transparency applied until you finish it. So let's say I want to finish this bend by going up with the pipe a total of 45 feet with a point every 15 feet, as you see here horizontally. I can insert all three of those sections of pipe at one time because they're the same direction and the same length. So it's like data. So I'll insert a run. It's going to go up 15 feet. And I actually want three of those. So you can actually see that those are all inserted at one time. Next, I'll insert, let's say, a reducer. And we'll go down to an 8-inch uh, pipe that I already have defined here. I'll insert another bend, maybe 20 feet away. I'll finish that bend with a small run just to complete the radius of the bend um, before adding in a valve. So at this point, I actually want to add in a, a valve, a flanged valve. We do have a manufacturer's library for our valves. So if you were to pick a certain manufacturer, you can pick your subtype, type, category, uh, main end, and pressure rating. And from that, your length and your valve weight would automatically be calculated. This would be checked on by default. Now you can uncheck that and you can change the valve weight, but when it's using a manufacturer's catalog, you actually cannot change the length. So if you have some type of specific valve that's not in our library, you would want to use the AutoPipe generic library where you can pick a certain type of valve and main, main end and pressure rating. The length and the valve weight will automatically be updated for you still, but you can adjust them. So here I'm using a 300 pound uh, flange gate valve. And let's say it's actually one and a half feet long and it actually is 550 pounds. I can easily update those. I also have to update my main end to make sure that my uh, joint SIF is correct. So I'll make it weld neck. And I can automatically enter in the flanges on both ends, the pipe mating flanges. And I'll finish my um, pipe here just by adding in another small pipe run and an anchor at the end. Anchors can be made rigid or, or flexible and thermal anchor movements can be added. So here's my piping model to start. Now let's say I'm going to turn off my lengths just to, actually I'll leave my lengths on for right now. Um, let's say I want to add some vertical supports down here at the bottom, just at points A1 and A3. Since it's the same type of support, I can actually select those points and insert the support at one time. Now I'm going to select just by holding down my control key on my keyboard, just like you do with Microsoft applications. But there's also other options on the select ribbon in order to select multiple points or components at once. So I'm going to hold my control down and click on A1 and then click on A3 and you should see the point names turned red. I'll then insert my support and pick a, a V-stop, a vertical support, stopping it from moving up and down. You could add gaps, you can add stiffness values, you can add uh, friction values, all different inputs for different types of supports. But for right now, just a rigid vertical support. 
All right, let's say I want to add a guide maybe up here along this pipe. If I want to add a guide at that location, maybe five feet from my A8, I have to actually have a point there first. So if I select A8, the segment direction is going up. So if I actually want to insert a point, I would insert a run. By default, AutoPipe recognizes that there's actually piping after this point, and it actually just inserts a point halfway along that. So here's 20 feet. By default, it puts a point at 10 feet. It's not actually adding an additional pipe. If I want it at the five foot mark, I just change this length to five feet, which is what I'll do. But if I actually wanted to add in additional piping, let's say add in 10 feet of additional piping, I would keep the length at 10 and I would check this on, apply offset to all following points, and that would actually add in additional piping and push everything else up. So I'm just going to keep the total length as 20 feet and just add a point at the five foot mark, which you can see easily gets done. And I'll insert a support and I'm going to pick a guide. All right, so if I view all my piping here, there are other show options to check your inputs. Um, right now I have my lengths on, but if I turn my lengths off to unclutter my model, we also have options like color plots for for all, a lot of your inputs. Um, one of them, this model doesn't have too much going on, but one of them being for your pipe properties. So for instance, I have different diameters. If I look at a color plot for my nominal diameter, you can see how easy it would be to kind of catch something that might be input incorrectly using these color plots. And we have that for operating pressure and temperature, a lot of, a lot of loading data also. This is really useful. It's a lot easier to catch a mistake than reviewing a black and white text report. So keep these show options in mind. Uh, once you're done checking your inputs, we, of course, you can always add more loads. We're just doing gravity, temperature, and pressure here to keep it very simple. But we do have static loadings on the left and dynamic loadings on the right. Um, but now I'll set up a static analysis set. I'm just going to set up a single analysis set that includes gravity, temperature, and pressure. And I'll run the analysis. Just running static here. Once it runs through, I'm technically ready to review my results. But before I do that, I always want to look at my combinations and make sure that they're set up correctly for reviewing my results. So the load cases tab shows any load cases I included in each analysis set. So mine is quite simple. The code combinations tab are going to be my combinations that I'll use to review my code stress results. So again, AutoPipe automatically creates some combinations for me based on my code and my code year of this model, which in this case, I think it was B313-2016. If I want to add additional or modify these or delete them, I definitely can. Up at the top, there are options for doing so. So a lot of times you have additional project requirements to your code requirements, and you might want to add some additional um, combinations. The non-code combinations tab will be used to review all of your results besides code stresses. So your uh, displacements, forces and moments, support loads, nozzle loads all of those types of results. Now this isn't based on a code, so it doesn't uh, combine anything based on the code, but it will automatically combine some uh, operating cases that just make sense based on the load cases that you've included. Again, if you need to add or delete or modify, you definitely can up at the top. All right, so usually first thing we do is take a look at our code stresses. We can look at a all combination, which is just an envelope of our combinations, basically a worst case scenario. Is anything going wrong here? Um, and it automatically brings me to the point of highest stress, which I see is A12 uh, in the dialog box, which gives me more detailed information about that point. And I see it's in the sustain case up on the top left where the key is for my color coding. I can then navigate through the different points just by clicking with my mouse. Uh, the dialog box will always be updated according to the point where your cursor is at. And I can navigate from greatest to least stress um, by using the navigate buttons. I can also review uh, my displacement plot on the screen. For example, for my operating case, if I want to animate it, I can. And once I stop it, again, the dialog box will match the point where the cursor is at and give more detailed information about what's happening here. I have other results that can be reviewed inter 
interactively also for example a restraint reaction where I can review my forces and moments for my different restraints. You can also review results in the results grid which I previously mentioned. This is a really nice uh, grid. It's uh, sortable by double clicking on column headings. There's different tabs for different results. There's filtering options over on the right. And what I like the best is that it's synchronized with the plot. So it gives you the best, best of both worlds, the plot and the grid to review. Um, again, I would put this on my second screen nice and big. Um, but if you click on any point on the, in the grid, it also selects that point or support on the uh, plot too. And you can see the color uh, coding for the code stresses tab. And then lastly, we always need a deliverable. So we can get that deliverable um, using our SQLite database reporting. If you click on our any of our report options, it will open up the report manager, again, that uses a SQLite database. And we have our legacy text reports, which are both input and output reports, and we'll open up an ASC2 text report file. So to show you that as an example, uh, it shows you all of the auto pipe information, all of your model information, your table of contents, and then all of your sub reports that you've asked for, including code compliance, displacements, uh, forces and moments, flange checks if you asked for it, etc. We also, you can see in here, have a word report tab. Now our word reporting is available to use, but it is called a technology preview, which means that while it's available for our users to test and to use and to report back to us on, we don't certify it for use on projects just yet. That is something to look forward to shortly. Um, but you can still get a feel for this report if I just generate it. And it's something to really look forward to. Um, you will be able to include things like images on these word reports. We'll have an image gallery available. Um, and you can see that it's a nice word report uh, with a snapshot, a table of contents that can be updated, and all of your different sections in really nice, neat tables. And then lastly, we have a, an Excel report that can be created for basically any input or any output. As an example, if I wanted a report for my code compliance and my displacement data, I could. I can pick and choose what columns I want to include on my um, Excel report. But let me just show you generating this. Now, when I have two different reports in there, it's going to create two different Excel tabs for me. Again, if I don't want some of these columns, because you can see there's a lot of information, I can just delete them right from the uh, report manager and they won't show up in this report. I have a code compliance tab and a displacement tab that were created. If I want to, you can set up a join query to actually join these into one report. You can also add charts and pivot tables to your Excel report. So this is a really nice uh, deliverable option also, and this is certified for use now. Okay, I think that really gives a nice overview of Autopipe as a whole. The last thing I'll just mention is the support optimization tool. There's an entire tab for it. We have a tutorial available for this and a recent webinar that we've done on this. So if you're interested in, in using this, um, it's available also. So at this point, um, I think that's enough to show you at, and thank you for joining in.